It's your hope to remain the 49ers moving forward. Uh, okay, this might have been the last day we touched foot on Levi Stadium. Yet. That's all I got. Thanks, man. Thank you. Thank you. I know it's been a very brutal week for San Francisco 49ers fans, and it seems like, unfortunately, things are getting a little worse. Now, all of this can be rationalized because obviously, when your team lost the Super Bowl and you came this close, obviously some tempers are gonna be flaring. But in this particular instance, it seems almost calculated that Brandon Ayuk is trying to leave the San Francisco 49ers. And there's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of parts of this that don't make sense. And I feel like it warranted a video. So before we get to the content, make sure you drop like, subscribe, and turn on our notifications to help the channel grow. Now that we get all of that out of the way, work! My Super Bowl picks that I made in my content with the Patrick Mahomes free square didn't hit, but the one that I posted onto my story did hit. And you guys let me know how much money you made in my DMs. And now that the NFL season's over, we're officially directing our attention to the NBA. I give away my picks for free at the Flight Mike on Instagram. And right now, when you sign up for prize picks, use promo code Flight Mike to get up to a $100 deposit match when you sign up on prize picks. Or you can just use my link in the description down below. And thank Thank you, prize picks, for the sponsor. Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on, everybody? At this point, you might be very familiar with San Francisco 49ers wide receivers causing trouble. I mean, literally a week ago, we made a video on how Debo Samuel got finessed into beefing with Cam Newton. If you guys don't remember this, this is as a result of Cam Newton saying that Brock Purdy is a game manager. Debo Samuel came to Brock Purdy's defense and called out Cam Newton on the Up and Adam show. First of all, Cam Newton stopped taking my phone, bro. He was a fan like two weeks ago. Like, that's mad crazy. Like, you wanted me on your podcast after talking about my quarterback, which is funny to me. Cam Newton would say that he doesn't even have Debo Samuel's number. You must stop the cap, bro. I n <laughs> now, my point is this. You said something like, Cam, stop calling my phone. I'm like... <laughs> Well, I don't got your number. And at that point, you would see these hysterical images of someone impersonating Cam Newton, texting Debo Samuel, and it even got to a point where Debo Samuel called the number that he thought was Cam Newton. Yeah, probably. It's been a minute. I was hoping to uh, connect with you, bro. I mean, we got some boys that look out to you, look up to you. You know what I mean? What's going on? Nothing, bro. I mean, I was just hoping to talk. I mean, I don't know if you're busy right now, but. I mean, I was just honestly calling to, uh, you know, whatever you got for the- It seems like now Debo Samuel is beefing with an individual that was on last year's Super Bowl losing team, Fletcher Cox, who immediately called out Debo Samuel the moment that the San Francisco 49ers lost the Super Bowl with very warranted trash talk. I still got something you ain't got. Yeah, I've been holding this one in, son. EAD. I wonder what EAD stands for. Hmm. Eat a dandelion? I don't know. Let me know in the comment section down below. But immediately after the Super Bowl ended, man, obviously all of the San Francisco 49ers were emotional. And how could you not be? It's so difficult to make it to the Super Bowl. This is a team that's made it to the Super Bowl two times in the past five years. And it got so bad that you even saw the San Francisco 49ers offensive lineman, John Feliciano, blaming Spencer Buford for missing a crucial block that allowed a free rusher to Brock Purdy. I mean, saying a quick chop is not needed if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him. Spencer Buford responded saying, she I opened my app to get to this, get well soon, bro. And then he said, I'm sorry, bro. I woke up hungover and being a b and trying to have one's back. I hurt you up and I apologize. You got nothing but greatness ahead of you. I'm sorry, bro. I give him a pass. I'd be emotional if I was the guy that missed the block on Chris Jones. I'd be emotional if I was on the offensive line. I would be blaming everyone. And then after I simmered down, I would realize like, hey, we gave it our best and we ended up losing. You can make so many excuses as to why the 49ers didn't win the Super Bowl. I mean, the Christian McCaffrey fumble, the special teams fumble, a missed extra point, every drive getting sandbagged by offensive penalties, and the receivers somehow losing the ball in the air twice. 
twice. You could blame the fact that Kyle Shanahan elected to receive the ball immediately and not know the overtime rules. At the end of the day, what's done is done. But that isn't stopping more members of the San Francisco 49ers from being emotional. Another individual that was really sad about the final play that he was on the field for the Super Bowl is none other than Brandon Ayuk. On this third and four, when Brock Purdy got hit by Chris Jones, if you take a look at Brandon Ayuk, in this particular instance, he's wide open. Purdy doesn't even have the opportunity to look at him, but if he had one or two seconds longer, it would have been a touchdown. Maybe the 49ers win at that point. And following that game, Brandon Ayuk was overcome with emotion, saying this. Just, uh, guys that came in to work to be champions uh, every single day. That's all I got. Thanks, man. Thanks, man. And again, don't blame Brandon Ayuk for feeling that way. I don't blame any individual for crying after losing the biggest game of their career. Again, nothing's guaranteed. You don't know if you're gonna make it back to this point. Dan Campbell said it best after the Detroit Lions lost the NFC Championship. But Brandon Ayuk had a career year, his second consecutive year where he went over a thousand yards receiving. But this year, he was an all pro. He established himself as the wide receiver one for the San Francisco 49ers. And another thing he mentioned during that post game press conference Conference was his future in San Francisco. This is what started to shock 49ers fans. It's your hope to remain at 49ers moving forward? Uh, Typically, we don't really make full length videos on one cryptic message from a player during an emotional moment following a very big game when their season ends. We've seen this all the time. How many times have you seen Aaron Rodgers tell you that his future in Green Bay isn't guaranteed? He did it for the final three years as a member of the Green Bay Packers. Is any idea who's going to be there? Anybody who's going to be quarterback and in the number 12 jersey? Yeah, I don't know, BA. Let's see. But it seemed like this was a coordinated attack. Because the very next day, Brandon Ayuk's girlfriend said that they might not be in San Francisco. Okay, this might have been the last day we touched foot only by stadium, me and Braylon, because we might not be out here next season. And you could tell this was coordinated because Brandon Ayuk's brother, or best friend in this instance, also tweeted something about the San Francisco 49ers, but it was a little bit more aggressive in my opinion, saying, this is the exact reason why we're leaving San Francisco. Thank you 49ers for drafting my brother. We are forever grateful. BA to Vegas. Why does your all pro 1300 yard receiver have three catches in the Super Bowl? This is exactly like two years ago when the San Francisco 49ers were dealing with Debo Samuel doing the same exact thing. Only in the case of Brandon Ayuk, he's doing it a little sooner. And by the way, Brandon Ayuk joins in on this, posting don't forget what got you there onto his story. Now, why would he do this? The timing is very interesting to say the least. Because what's going to end up happening to Brandon Ayuk is he has a fifth year option that's going to pay him $14 million. And the 49ers are probably going to exercise that option. And that's when you get to the point where you could start negotiating a long-term deal. Bear in mind, in the case of Debo Samuel, Debo Samuel wasn't drafted in the first round of the NFL draft. Brandon Ayuk is. The 49ers essentially get Brandon Ayuk on a rookie scale contract for one more season. So why is Brandon Ayuk doing all of this? Does Brandon Ayuk actually want to leave? Well, in this particular instance, he can't leave. He's still under contract for one more year. The reason he's doing all this is because he wants a contract extension. It's in the 49ers best interest to extend Brandon Ayuk as soon as possible because at the very same time, CD Lamb is already negotiating a contract extension with the Dallas Cowboys. Now, pay very close attention here because this is where you have a little bit of a problem. If you guys remember, the 2020 NFL draft featured one of the deepest wide receiver classes that we've seen in recent memory. Henry Ruggs was supposed to be the fastest player in that class and he was actually doing really well in year two before a horrific mistake and a terrible decision on his part ruined his life. Jerry Judy was a miss unfortunately. C.D. Lamb was a huge home run for the Dallas Cowboys and then you have Jalen Rager who was a miss, Justin Jefferson that was a hit, Brandon Ayuk that was a hit and then you have T. Higgins, 
Michael Pittman Jr. I used to include Chase Claypool in this list, but he's not really there anymore. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning this is if you were drafted in the first round of this NFL draft, you still have a fifth year option available to you, but the second round picks are looking to get paid now. T Higgins and Michael Pittman Jr. are up for contract extensions, but the most important person that you want to beat out in this particular instance is Justin Jefferson, especially if you're the Dallas Cowboys and if you're the San Francisco 49ers. You don't want to pay your wide receiver after Justin Jefferson gets his contract. And in the case of the Minnesota Vikings, I think they're probably going to wait to pay Justin Jefferson so they can figure out what the wide receiver market is because the wide receiver market exploded in the summer of 2022 when you saw Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams completely reset the market at the wide receiver position. So the 49ers have two options here. They could either exercise that Uke's fifth year option and then franchise tag him next year. But the problem is at that point, Brock Purdy's time to get a contract extension would be coming up. Purdy's contract is going to be expiring in the summer of 2026. So that's when you'd want to potentially explore extending Brock Purdy before his price tag becomes too expensive. And when Brock Purdy gets his extension, that's when you're going to have to make some tough decisions on the rest of this 49ers roster. So at the end of the day, I think Brandon Ayuk is just trying to leverage his situation to get a contract extension now. I don't think the 49ers are going to trade him. I don't think he's going to leave. He physically cannot leave until next offseason. This is just him trying to get a contract extension now that the season is over. And on top of this, the San Francisco 49ers made a very controversial decision today, announcing that they've officially parted ways with their defensive coordinator, Steve Wilkes. This is coming straight from Adam Schefter. As a matter of fact, Kyle Shanahan straight up says that he fired Steve Wilkes during a conference call. And 49ers fans feel some type of way about this because on one hand, throughout the Shanahan era, you had Robert Sala, D'Amico Ryans, and Steve Wilkes. Now you're going on your fourth defensive coordinator which sucks when you have a group of all pros on the defensive side of the football, especially when defense was a very strong point for the San Francisco 49ers. Now, was Steve Wilkes very aggressive in the way he ran his defense? Did he blitz a lot? Yeah, he blitzed a lot, but of course it ended up working because the 49ers not only made it to the Super Bowl, but they held Patrick Mahomes to 19 points in four quarters. I think it's a little unnecessary to point the blame finger at Steve Wilkes. I certainly don't think he deserves to be fired. I certainly don't think the blame falls squarely on his shoulders. And I think it's a little cheap that his, and I think it's a little cheap that he is getting the blame. Maybe Kyle Shanahan has someone better in mind, but all I could say is having a revolving door at defensive coordinator when you have players like Nick Bosa, Charvarius Ward, Fred Warner on that, on the defensive side of the football, it's not necessarily ideal. If you're a 49ers fan, let me know in the comment section down below what you think is going to happen to Brandon Ayuk. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.